Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Daggett, and in today's video, we're doing phase three. We're doing line work and black work. So in last week's video, we covered how to draw the background elements and design. So we went through the process of adding the waves in, adding the wind bars or water bars in, and also putting in some fl floral elements to give the design a little bit more color. And it, I think it really came together. In today's video, we're gonna be covering how to do the line work, and on top of this, we're going to be covering how to shade all of the black work shading. So we're going to be doing all of the background work and a little bit of work on the fish itself. And we're going to be starting to wrap up on this one. So uh, let's jump into today's video to the overhead. Okay, guys, welcome back to the table. We are at phase three. So in today's video, we're going to be lining our drawing, transferring it onto the correct paper for painting. And then we're going to start laying in our black shading. So to start this one off, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take some masking tape. In this case, I've got this masking tape, which is about an inch thick. Yeah, so we've got an inch wide masking tape. And we're going to take that and basically measure out an inch from each border of our drawing using our ruler here. So just come in from the side, measure an inch, come up from the bottom, measure an inch and you're going to do that around the entire design okay once you've drawn in the dots uh, at one inch from each side of the page you're going to essentially connect those dots using the ruler here so we're going to basically create a border across the entire page and you just draw straight over the top of your sketch in this case and you want to use pretty heavy lines Okay, so you can see I've drawn in a one inch border around the entire thing and I've actually just gone straight over the top of this fin, straight over the top of the petal, over the top of our flower. There is a reason for that and that is that we're doing this uh, koi fish series as a complete piece of artwork. So I want to show you guys how I do my um, backgrounds. So essentially that portion that we just boarded off is going to be left as white paper and the background will actually cut off at that point, so it will frame the design. But parts of the design, such as the tail, the front fin, this petal, this petal, and the flower, the main subject matters, will actually come out of the border. And it gives you a really nice dynamic between the background and the foreground. Okay, so there are a few things you're gonna need for today's, to follow along with today's video. However, feel free to do this with whatever medium you'd like. If you want to just keep working on your sketch paper, you can use um, graphite pencils and just shade the design with your pencils. Uh, if you're doing this in a, you know, not so good quality paper, like not a watercolor paper, um, then you can go ahead and use colored pencils to follow along. So don't feel like because you don't have these supplies, you can't do the artwork. It's certainly not the supplies that make the artwork good. It's how much you know, work you put into it. But in this case, I'm using cold press watercolor paper. It is 300 GSM and it is from Fabriano. So normally we use cold press, uh, sorry, hot press watercolor paper in my videos. But uh, for this one, I'm using hot, uh, cold press watercolor paper. So we'll take out a single sheet and I'm also going to be using a light pad. And that's something that I can't recommend enough if you are taking this uh, if you are taking your drawing seriously, get yourself a light pad. It will save you a lot of time and a lot of effort. So, you're basically going to line up your watercolor paper over the top of your drawing. And I bring it down about a millimeter, and then I just tape it with some masking tape. Okay, so I've now got tape at the top and at the bottom of my page. And this is to keep the paper basically from moving while I ink the design. And we're gonna plug in our light pad. And this lets us see the design through the paper. This one's got variable brightness, so you can actually go all the way up through the different brighting, uh, brightness settings. I like to keep it on this, uh, the second one, just like a nice medium brightness. And uh, if you don't have a light pad, something that I used to do was sit at a glass table and I turn my iPhone torch on and sit it underneath the table and it would shine up through the paper. Uh, so if you don't have a light pad, you can improvise with that or do the old school method. Tape your design up to the window and just stand there and trace. So we're gonna go ahead and outline this guy now. Um, basically, a couple of things to keep in mind. 
Any things that you want to be coming out of the border, outline them now. Any parts that you want to maintain within the border, don't outline them now. So it's pretty straightforward. All the wave portions of this, I'm going to leave behind the border. And the petals, any main subject matter, so the flower and the fish, any parts of that that intersect with my border lines that I just marked, I'm going to essentially leave those in and outline them now. So go ahead and outline all of your uh, subject matter using whatever you'd like. Today I'm using my art line markers or fine liners and this Stabler pigment liner in a 1.2 thickness. But you can of course use whatever you're comfortable with. And we line this the same way I've lined all my other tutorial videos. Basically things that you want to be bold and stand out. You boost those lines up and make them thick. And anything that you want to keep sort of pushed into the background, you do them a little bit thinner and make those lines a little bit smaller. I'm going to go ahead and outline this now. Okay guys, so as you can see, I've outlined the main subject matter, including the flower. I've also got some of the waves extending past our borderline. So it's pretty much up to you. Like these waves won't be outside the border and these ones will. It's an aesthetic thing and it's a style preference. You just play with it a little bit. I've got the main subject matter, like the flower and the tail of the fish coming out of the border and also the fin at the very bottom coming out of the corner of the uh, page there. So it's, it's completely up to you how you do it, but I would keep all of the flowing water that's not crashing in the complete background. So that will stay within the border entirely. And then some of your crashing waves can come out. That'll be a little bit of an experimentation sort of thing for you. Now what we're gonna do essentially is border off the edges using our masking tape. So we're gonna take the one inch tape like this and just take a piece off that's roughly the length of your page and you're going to mask it off at exactly the edge so this way you have a one inch um, masked off area at the bottom here and you can just fold that around the bottom and stick it around to the back of the page and you're going to do this up the sides of your page and also across the top Uh, so what I've done here is I've just masked off the edges of our page with our one inch uh, masking tape here. And you've basically run it right to the edge so that you get a one inch border just like we ruled up before on our sketch. And just quickly, I want to point out a couple of things with our line work. So a couple of things that I consider really important when lining a design like this is to make the dorsal fin really bold all the way across the top edge and down that front edge there. I like the top of the fish to stand out and be really, really clear amongst all of the scales and waves and mess that's going on underneath of it. This gives the fish really solid foundation in terms of where it sits in the design and it sort of catches your eye. So you can, um, you can it makes it readable basically. You can read the design a bit easier. Uh, I also like to do the top edge of the fish uh, a really bold line. So I do a top edge of his body and then also the top edge of his head, nice and bold. Another little thing I want to point out is you probably notice there's this big white gap um, over the fin here. That's because we have those wave bars actually going over the top of our fin. So the way you outline those is you bring the all of the lines right up to your wave bar and then you leave a white gap and then continue the lines you know about half a centimeter from that gap so you want to make sure you have uh, a white gap there because that'll come in handy later when we decide to shade this and do the coloring okay so we're going to go ahead and turn our light pad back on and we're going to go through and quickly line all of the other background elements that are now cut off by the border once you put your tape on that's basically it you can take it off and re redo some parts but once you put the tape on everything you draw will be I'll background. give you an example with these small lines here. Basically, they're gonna run from here and off onto our masking tape. Which means when I take that tape off, those lines are gonna stop at a hard edge like that. And you're gonna do that for all of those wispy uh, background water, uh, flowing water lines that we did. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline those now and then we'll get to the next part. 
Hey guys, so the outline is finished. I've masked off the edges. As you can see, I've added in these red lines, which I forgot to mention. Basically, it is red fine line Sharpie or any other alcohol based fine liner. And I've just used that to do the center vein on the petals um, prior to painting them. So, you know, you can do them in black. I like to do them in red, depending on the color of the flower. We're going to go ahead and start doing the black work on this. So it's a little bit hard to explain because it is time consuming. So I may give you like a couple of examples and then skip to the next segment, but feel free to pause the video, finish off that part that we're talking about and continue on with the next part. We're going to start off with the flowing parts of the waves, the, the water bars, I guess we'll call them or the, yeah, the flowing parts of water. Now, normally in my videos, I use an eco line brush pen along with my handy little water brush. We're not going to be doing that in today's video. I'm going to be showing you guys what I use for my professional work and my portfolio work. And the reason for that is, you know, this, this uh, Koi Fish series is about showing you guys how to take a picture from a blank page or a blank canvas all the way through to a finished product as opposed to doing just a subject matter. So normally I'll rush through the video and just use like my Ecoline markers because it's quick and easy. But in today's video, I'll be doing things the way that I normally would do them. Uh, if you don't have the supplies that I'm using, feel free to use the Ecoline markers. They're fantastic. And you've seen the results in previous videos. So I'll be using Carbon Black Liquitex ink as my ink medium. A little watercolor palette. I've got a glass of water. I've got a little tube which is full of water and it's just like a little squeezy bottle, but you know, you don't have to use that. You could use just a syringe or um, even just, you know, drip from the tap slowly. But basically what we're gonna do is a little bit of solid black in one of these wells. And then just maybe one, yeah, well, for now we'll do one drop of black in that well and a few drops of water to dilute it. Okay, so we've got solid black here on the left and a diluted gray uh, black wash on the right or a gray wash on the right. And if you get a bit confused while doing this, just try to keep it the same every time. So with this particular palette of six wells, I pretty much always have solid black on the left and my gray on the right. And then behind there, I can mix and play with colors and things like that. So I, I don't really get too confused because I know that my solid black is always on the same side. In doing this, I also have my two brushes. I have shown you these before. I've got my inking brush and my water brush. So they're both just standard brushes. They're synthetic Taclon um, uh, hairs. And basically I use one of them to lay down the ink and one of them to blend. Uh, this is my blending brush because it is a bit bigger. And this one has a slightly finer tip on it. So I use that for laying down the ink. Okay, so I'm going to run you through how we do these um, wave bars that come across our design. Essentially what you're going to do is solid black up against the line and then blend it up to white until it meets the next line. So I'll zoom in and give you an example. Okay, so we're going to start off with this area here. Now to make sure you have complete control of how much water is in your brush, we're going to use a method called spit shading. Basically you dip your brush into water and run it through your lips and basically extract however much water you want there to be on the brush. It gives you a great amount of control. You have to work fairly quickly with ink, so there won't be a lot of talking in between the actual laying down the black and the blending, but I'll try my best to explain what I'm doing. You're basically going to take your uh, inking brush and dip it into your ink and lay your black down along that line that we drew. And how thickly you lay the black down or how wide you lay the black, you know, ultimately depends on how you want, you know, how you want it to look. It's completely up to you. And take your water brush and just blend that edge out like this. And you blend it up as a gray until it hits the next line. And by the time it hits that next line up, you kind of want it to be nearly white. A little tip if you want to get a slightly smoother blend is to wet your paper first along, the, uh, along that sort of bleed edge. 
And with your inking brush, just apply the ink so it overlaps with the water a little bit. And this will help spread the ink a little bit better. More uniformly, I should say. Now this portion above here doesn't really have any black in it. If you look at the way the black goes, it goes behind the head. And this portion would be primarily gray to match up with the gray that we've got here. So I'm going to take my water brush and dip it directly into our light gray that we've made, that gray wash. And I'll start to use that to lay down a nice layer of gray. And we'll use the exact same technique we did before to blend it up to the line. Okay, so that's the basis for doing our water bars. We're going to do that across the entire design. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. But before I do, I just want to show you how to do the black that overlaps with this fin. It's very easy and it's pretty much the exact same technique, but you're not going to use very much black at all. In fact, we're going to go in just with our gray to start with and sort of build this up a little bit. So we're going to do gray straight off that line that we did like this. Take some water and just blend that forward a little bit. And so now you can sort of see that grayness sits over the top of our fin and actually has a slightly transparent look because there's no hard edge where the fin actually goes back underneath that wave bar. So that has a really nice look to it. And the fact that it's a light gray and it's sort of built up a little bit gives it that shallow look. The deeper the water is, then the more black is gonna be there uh, because there's more shadow. So in doing it this way, you get a little bit lighter of a look. And then essentially we can just go around and do the rest of our wave bars the same way by adding our black like this wherever you feel it needs it and then take your watercolor brush draw the moisture out and blend that black across to the other line reaching a white or near white gray when you reach that line so now as you can see i've done all of the background uh, elements that are cut off by the border aside from the waves uh, aside from the actual finger waves but the wave bars or the water bars are all shaded so we've just done solid black faded up like I showed you up to the line and you can see that the lines pretty much disappear because the next portion of black covers that line which gives the background a really soft appearance as opposed to having that really harsh lots of heavy line work in the background the lines are sort of created by the black shading and in the past I've actually done it with no lines but for the sake of the video, it's a lot easier to show you uh, how to do the shading off a line. And so I've done all of the first pattern we did down here. I basically did that all the way up to here. Started again at the bottom, did it this way all the way around. Just a nice sort of soft gray area at the top with a little bit of black in the corner there. And behind the back area here and down the bottom here, I've just drawn in a few more finger waves. Uh, to fill in a bit of that space. This area up here was looking really empty. So I just filled it out more with some finger waves. And that's something you can experiment with. And it's an important part of the learning process is when you're doing a big piece like this, then you might come across parts that need to be outlined that you didn't outline or spaces that you didn't put something in. And it means you probably didn't plan the piece well enough, but at the same time, it's a learning curve and you can add to things as you go. So I drew those in after we started the shading and that's okay. So to show you this, I'm gonna take this section of waves here and we're gonna shade that and I'll show you how to do it. We're actually gonna take our gray, the, the gray that we made, and we're gonna add a little bit more water to it. I want this to be a really light tone. I don't want the heavy tone. So at the moment, the gray is similar to this gray here, but I'm gonna add a whole bunch more water to it and just dilute it and desaturate it even more so that we have a nice light gray. And I'm not going to be using the ink brush at all for this. I'm just going to use my shading brush and uh, dip it into my gray. And we'll start in this little nook here. That's about the tone that I want. You play around with that a little bit, see what kind of tones you can get. And, you know, 
just experiment with how dark you want it to be. I'm gonna blend that out. When you come to a, a little edge of like a wave that's in front, you can shade onto it, but leave that little skin break along the edge. When you come onto a larger segment, you can just blend that out until it reaches a really light gray or a near white. So continuing up the wave, I'm gonna get more of our gray tone. Now, if you don't want these streaks that we've got in there, you've got to work a little bit faster than I am here. It's a little bit hard to work quickly and explain what I'm doing, but you don't have to rush too much. It's just, you know, you'll find your own timing for it. And this part can be quite messy. You don't have to stress too much about perfection here um, because there's no sort of really smooth blends. You're going from a light color to an even lighter or a light tone to an even lighter tone. So you don't have to worry too much about it not being the smoothest blend in the world. It'll sort of disappear into itself. So just blending that out. Leave the tips of each finger on the wave. Just leave them white. Don't put anything on the tips of the fingers. They're the parts that really stand out. And then in terms of if you want to put some shading in those fingers, along the bottom edge you can do a little bit of shading like this but just make sure you're leaving that little white edge all the way along okay and this makes your waves look really cool so just come in with a little bit of gray along the bottom edge of those fingers make sure you're leaving a little white border amongst all of those areas so for this area here i would take some gray rough it out in the middle like this, making sure to leave that edge. Take some water and just blend that gray right out. And just make sure I'm leaving the edges. So it's, it's really straightforward. It's pretty free flowing and loose. And you just wanna make sure you're leaving your highlight edges in there, leaving the tips of the finger waves white. Don't color them in, don't uh, shade them. And Basically anywhere that would be a little bit darker, so in the back here would be a little bit darker and it spreads out to a lighter gray. You can actually add a little bit more gray to that. Just darken it a little bit and just blend that out a little bit more. Okay, and that gives you a really nice uh, sort of fade among the rest of it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of the finger wave shading and then we'll get into shading the actual fish. All right, so I've gone ahead and shaded in all of the wave, uh, the actual finger wave parts. Uh, like I said, it's just a light gray faded out to white and leave those white edges on there. So you can sort of see the design starts to come together. And this is usually why I do all of my background elements first. We're going to quickly do a little bit of shading on the koi itself. And that will be it for today's video. So we're going to do the head of the koi first. Now we're not gonna do a whole bunch of shading in the koi fish itself, because it is gonna be a color design. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of black or gray shading uh, in the head of the koi. We wanna keep the colors nice and vibrant and simple. And just in my experience, unless you're doing a black or a gold sort of koi fish with these really deep black tones to it, you don't wanna oversaturate the koi fish with black shading. So we're actually gonna use a light gray sort of shading for most of what we're doing here. And we're gonna start with the headline, the center line of the head. We're gonna take our light gray that we mixed just before for the waves. And we're gonna do a little bit behind that line. And then I just wanna blend that up into a white. Okay, and you're gonna do the same thing all the way down the front of the head here. This will just help to give the head a little bit of tone uh, prior to laying down colors. So you're gonna do a little bit of that gray coming from the left side of the head behind the eye here. And again, just blend that up, this time up towards the center. Like that. In terms of the mouth, we're gonna do a little bit of the light gray at the edge of that lip there, that folded portion of the lip. 
and just blending that up. And along the bottom edge of the face here, we're going to do a light gray, but you're going to make sure to leave a gap of white. So shading along the bottom edge and just leaving that gap of white and blend that up just a little bit. You can bring that around the eye just a tad. Make sure you're leaving that edge. Just blend it up and around. Anywhere there's a little crease or a fold, if you'd like to, you can add a little bit of shadow to it. This will just give it a little bit more dimension and a slightly more realistic feel. Okay, so in terms of shading our scales, I'm gonna turn the page on its side like this. This gives my hand a little bit more control over the scales. And you're gonna start with the scales that are in line with our dorsal fin. So they're the very top row of scales. And you can follow with your finger along the dorsal fin to tell you exactly which scales they are, if you don't already know. And you're gonna take your ink brush and go straight into your black. We're gonna do the first row a solid black, no shading. Most importantly, you wanna leave a white edge on every single scale on this body. So we'll come up and back down, leaving a white edge. And then just because these scales are solid black, we're doing them solid black, just fill them in. Just like that and we're basically going to go down the entire length of the body and shade that center row or that first row of scales that we did a solid black just making sure that we leave that white border along the edge of the scales that's super important to the final result okay so i've done that row down the spine in a solid black we're now going to do the row next to it and on the opposite side to it so both, um, both rows that follow along with it in a mid gray. So I'll show you roughly the tone we're going for. So the tone that we're going for roughly is like this. It's pretty dark, but it's not quite black. And you're gonna go along and basically do the second set of scales on either side of that center row in this sort of dark gray color. Okay guys, that covers it for this video. We've done all of the background shading, we've done the waves, and we've done the shading in the top of the fish and the fish head. The rest of it will be covered in the next phase, which is color, but this was the lining and black work sort of phase. And now we get to see the most satisfying thing ever, removing the tape. So at this point, it looks a little bit messy and a little bit crazy, but when I remove the tape, you'll see what I'm talking about. So at the start of the video, I was talking about taping the edges to give you those borders. And now you can probably see what I mean. So parts of the design like this pedal, this pedal, the tail, the fin down the front here, they come on the outside of the border. And all that black shading we just did in the background sits behind the white border. It looks really cool, it looks spectacular, and it's a great way to complete a piece of artwork like this. So this is usually the way that I do my backgrounds when I do professional or portfolio work. Of course, depending on what the client's after, but in terms of my portfolio work, it's usually done in this manner. I just think it makes backgrounds look really cool. Okay guys, so that was phase three, lining and black work. That is it guys, that was phase three, line work and black work. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. This week's viewer submission feature goes to Eddie Worth who sent me this skull and flowers drawing. I think he's done a really nice job. He's followed my skull and flowers tutorial which is like a trad style skull and flowers. It looks like he didn't have the supplies that we used in the video. So he improvised, he used colored pencils and that's what I mean guys, you don't have to have the supplies that I'm using um, to follow along. You can use whatever art supplies and materials you already have. If you want to see your artwork featured on my channel, head over to Facebook at Daggett Designs and flick me a DM with a drawing that you've done 
of one of my tutorial videos. If you want some feedback on your art, send me your artwork. Please make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below, letting me know what you'd like to see next time, what kind of content you want to see, guys. It's for you, so if you want to see tutorials, art challenges, more vlog style videos, let me know. Most of all, if you are new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. Make sure to turn on that notification bell so that you stay up to date every time a new video comes out. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.